All right, what's up people? Welcome back to Blue Chip Prospect once again. Today, instead of making a scouting report on a certain player, I thought I could do a top 10 of my favorite goal scorer from the 2023 NHL draft. One thing that is important to understand here is that this is not a top 10 in shooting ability, but more a top 10 of who I project to be the best goal scorer from this draft. So a little bit of everything comes into play here. To score in the NHL, they'll need a combination of IQ, skating, awareness, puck skills, middle lane drive, as well as a very good shooting ability. So maybe go get some popcorn and make yourself comfortable as this may take a while, but without further ado, let's start with my honorable mention. So first guy on the list here is Nick Lardis, who's been phenomenal with the Hamilton Bulldog. He has 25 goals in 33 games with the Bulldog, but had 12 goals in 36 games before that with the Peterborough Peets. For a total of 37 goals in 69 games, obviously the added ice time and the opportunity really helped him. He's a speedy winger that always seems to be at the right place at the right time, and the combination of his placement, skating, make him a real threat every time he jumps on the ice. I mean, there's also the fact that his snapshot is a laser it really helps that's for sure his one-timer is also really good it has a low kickback but a powerful release and his wrister has a lot of lateral movement on it he changes the angle of the shot effectively like many good goal scorer next honorable mention here is Gabe Perrow Pretty hard to ignore the guy when he scored 46 goals in 55 games. He's the reason why I decided to include a few honorable mentions to begin with. I'm a big, big fan of him. I completely disagree with everybody who says he's a product of Will Smith. He's his own player and he helps Will Smith just as much as Smith helps him. He's one of the smartest players on the draft and he's extremely skilled and slippery. I don't think he's the kind of guy who will score a lot because of his laser and his release. For him, the game is played in his head and he's always many, many steps ahead of everybody on the ice. I haven't graded all his tools in my Excel doc yet, but off the bat, I would rate his shot no more than a 6.5 or a 7, maybe even a 6. It's not what makes him great. The combination of his otherworldly puck skills and stick handling and his intelligence are the difference maker. He always know where to be and what to do to get the puck on his stick and score. The same can be said for his playmaking, but this is not a video about that, but it's just as impressive. To be perfectly transparent on how much I'm in love with this guy, when I started the production of this video, he was number 7 on the list. I had to rewatch hours of clips from other guys on this list to convince myself that they had better goal scoring tools than he does. It's true that chances are that Jaeger or Leonard are going to score more goals than he will, but I will not be surprised for a second if in 5 or 6 or 7 years from now he's a dynamic goal scorer and the other I forced myself to list before him end up way below him. Last but not least of my honorable mention is Mr. Zach Benson. He ended up the year with 36 goals in 60 games which is third on his team with only 193 shots on goal. That should tell you enough about where he shoots from. Obviously I don't think shooting at a 18.7 clip will be sustainable in the NHL but anyway what's important for him to keep scoring is to keep doing what he's doing and if you don't know what that is I will strongly recommend you go watch my scouting report I made on him about three or four weeks ago. To make it simple for the purpose of this video, he drives his offensive resolve with his fierce competitiveness. Basically, he doesn't know he's 5'10", barely 160 pounds. He drives the middle lane all the time, he crashes the net if he needs to, he shoots from high danger area with consistency and he will cut to the slot to shoot if he's coming from the perimeter. He doesn't have the most powerful shot or the quickest release, but he drives positive offensive resolve because he's a high-end competitor. Paris compete with his very good overall skill and IQ and you get a very dangerous player. I'm impressed by how much he scored considering how he never cheats. He has only 4 goals less than Furkus who is seen as a great goal scorer but Furkus cheats all the time and wait for the puck high while Benson gets the puck himself and scores just as much. Overall, very impressive. Alright, so let's get into the top 10 and at number 10 I have Ryan Leonard. He just had a fantastic season scoring 42 goals in 49 games as the do-it-all guy on his line. Not the do-it-all type like Will Smith where he tries to then go through the whole team but the do-it-all type like Benson. He doesn't have the same bottomless motor but he's bigger and stronger. He also doesn't have the same puck skills but his shot is a little better. He has a good one-timer and a good wrister that's very accurate but again like Benson his bread and butter will be shooting from high range area and cutting to the middle with a stick down for the little tap-ins. He's very efficient at getting from the board or the corners to the middle of the ice and I can see him scoring a lot of goals as followed. Winning the puck battle in the corner, cycling the puck behind the net to the other side of the ice and moving closer for a tap-in or a one-touch shot from the slot. 
I think his game as a goal scorer will stay relatively simple, but he has the tools to be a very, very, very good player in that simple offense type of game. He's also very dedicated to winning puck battles, whether it's along the board or in the slot, and that will help him thrive at the pro level. I'm excited to see how he turns out. He has good to very good skills all around and play a very pro game already. In my opinion, he will for sure have a good career in the NHL, but I'm just not sure what the upside is. Is he a 15-20 goal scorer in the NHL, or does he work on his, on his puck skills and manipulations and becomes a 25-30 goal scorer who's a dominant force along the board and works hard in all three zones? The future will tell, but I'm starting to lean more and more on the second option. Alright, so at number 9, I have Oliver Moore, and it's funny because by January, I had more equal or even the tiniest bit ahead of Will Smith as the best national program player. I was constantly impressed by his skating, his overall shot and shot selection, as well as his dedication to play well all around the ice. Since then, Smith won me over with the way he manipulates the defense, but more as the tools to be the best player out of the U.S. National Development Program this year. I think he has the best shot of all the U.S. NTDP, outside of Cole Eiserman, obviously, but sometimes it's hard to evaluate his overall effectiveness when he doesn't get to play with the big three of Leonard, Smith, and Perro. So offensively, he doesn't have the numbers of his teammate, but like I said, his shot is really, really good. He has a very good one-timer that's very accurate and heavy, and the same can be said for his wrister. It's very heavy and accurate, and like many other good goal scorers, he gets to the hard areas to score. I think he would definitely gain to work on his release while in stride or at a standstill to make Make it more compact and fast. He really leans onto his stick and sometimes takes a bit too long to let it go, but I'm confident that it'll get better as he gets stronger. Combine his shot with his elite skating, he has a unique combination of skill in this draft. No one can skate like him, no one can put the defense on their heels like him, no one can maneuver in and out of cover, turn defenders, or cut like him. Like, who's gonna stop him on a given goal through the neutral zone? Not many can, and he'll have all the space he needs to rip one in the net even at the NHL level. Overall, I would grade a shot at a 7, like above average, but the combination of his head first game, his skating, and his shooting, and the willingness to push the pace all the time has the potential to make him one of the very best goal scorer in this draft. At number 8, we come back to Braden Yeager. There's not much I can say here that I haven't said just a couple days ago in my scouting report. So we'll get over this one pretty quick, but again, if you haven't seen it, go watch it and you'll soon understand how good his shot is. It's his main weapon and really his only attribute that really, really stands out. I gave it a grade of 8, which means it's a high-end shot, and when I say it's high-end, I mean I project it to be high-end at the NHL level. I'm not talking about junior here. Unlike most players on this list, he doesn't need other attributes to be an effective goal scorer. All he needs is his shot. Obviously, the fact that he's good at everything sure helps, but his shot alone is one of the very, very best in this draft. One of the fastest releases you'll ever see from a junior player, and the puck explodes off of his stick every single time. Like I said in my video about him, he has that type of shot that can beat goalie clean even in the NHL. It's really that good. It was my opinion a couple days ago. It's not about to change. He's a spectacular shooter. What I'll do for the prospect that I already did a draft profile video on, I'll just link them in the description below to make it easier to find. Alright, so at number 7, I got no one else than Will Smith. What's crazy about it is that scoring goals is not even what he's best at. He's an even more spectacular creator than a goal scorer and sometimes it really feels like he relies on his goal scoring only when he has exhausted every playmaking options possible. He'll break everybody's ankle on his way to the net still looking for a pass only to shoot it last second and score like it's nothing. Sometimes it just looks like he looks at every option and once they're all out he'll shoot it and score but it was always gonna go in no matter what. When he's on, he's on. He can be one of the very, very best playmaker in this draft, as well as one of the very, very best goal scorer in this draft. The thing is that he's always on, but sometimes he's like defective. He's not like Crystal, where sometimes he's on and sometimes he's off. Smith is always on, but he's always playing fast and hard, and he's always trying, but sometimes it's like 
the processor in his head as was switched from a high-end chip that can run any software you'd want to a cheap Chinese chip that can barely run a $50 tablet. If he can work on that execution consistency and on using his teammates better, I would not be surprised if he became the third or fourth best player from this draft, but if he doesn't, he could also sink way lower than where he'll be picked. Overall, I grade a shot at a 7, which is above average, so it's not like he'll score a ton of gold just because he has a spectacular shot like Bedard, but when you combine the quality of his shot with the fact that he has some of the best hands in this draft and also one of the greatest offensive mind in this draft, he has the upside to be a special goal scorer in the NHL. He's not the most inside driven player, but it's not like he's scared of playing in a dangerous area either, but he's too good at manipulating defense or creating delays in his shot that completely fools everybody left standing on the ice including the goalie, that it's not a prerequisite for his success. Smith will need to adapt his game to the pro level and will need to be more consistent. He'll also need to find his limits and understand them, but if he does, he will become such a dynamic player in the NHL. I'm just so excited to see what he becomes. Well, I'm always excited, so it doesn't mean much, but nonetheless, I'm really excited. So before we jump to number six, I forgot what's called my call to action in the beginning, so I'm gonna do it now. If you guys like these videos, I would really appreciate if you like it and if, or if you subscribe. I put a ton of effort into these videos. Like I just wrote a 6,500 word script for this one. So when you guys like or subscribe, it really showed the appreciation and I love it. So please, if you like it, press the like button, and if you don't, well, press dislike, all right? So, <laughs> so let's get back on track. All right, so at number six, I got Bradley Nado. If this guy hits, watch out. His shot is completely lethal. He's been tearing it up in the BCHL with 45 goals in 54 games and eight goals in four games in the playoff, which only puts him second on his team in goals per game behind another first-year draft-eligible player in Russian-born Adar Suniev. Kind of crazy that the Peddington V's have the three best goal scorer and overall point producer in the BCHL on the team. Obviously... The BCHL isn't known for their NHL player development with some first round pick misses like Tyson Jones and Bo Bennett, but they also have some notable player like Cal Terris, Alex Newhook and Jamie Benn. But anyway, when you find a player that can shoot the puck like Bradley Nato can, you take a chance. He has an excellent snapshot and movement and a great wrister and one-timer. He's a very dangerous shooter in a transition because of that speed and also extremely dangerous on a power play as a one-timer option. He is one of the most accurate shooter in the draft in my opinion. Not only he can shoot it fast with very good velocity, he can shoot it with pinpoint accuracy exactly where he wants to put it. And that's either from a snapshot in transition, a wrister from a standstill or a one-timer from the left flank. All his shots are equally accurate and he can pick corners from distance. Basically, when he shoots the puck, he looks like an NHL shooter. The way some can pick corners with ease, he does that all the time, every night. Now, doing it at the NHL level with a lot less pace and time is a different ball game, but most players couldn't do it like he does it at the BCHL level, so he has that going for him. Overall, I would grade his shot a good 8, putting it in the top 5 strictly in terms of shooting ability, so I didn't really have a choice to have him high in my ranking, but I do expect some players behind him to pass him. But like I said, if he hits, he'll score a lot of goals at the NHL level. He could become some type of Mike Hoffman back when he was a shooting threat. So at number 5, I have one of the most skilled players in the draft, Andrew Kristal. I feel like in every video, I compare something to how Kristal does it, and I'm not sure why, but after Bedard and Mishkov, he's the player I've watched the most, and I still don't have a great understanding or at least a stable projection of what he can become. I've watched over 20 games and within those 20 games I saw like 6 or 7 different crystal. So since I took the liberty to place him 5th on my list of the best goal scorer, I'm going to talk about THE crystal, not the other ones, but THE one. So THE crystal is the 2nd or 3rd best shooter in the draft. Obviously, no one is touching Bedard, but some days I'd be comfortable placing him second right behind Bedard, and some days I'd put him behind another player who's coming soon on this list. The thing with Crystal's shot is that he's nailing down every single attribute of a shot. The velocity is on point, the accuracy is top-notch, the change of angle is there whenever he needs it, but what he's the best at is the little fakes and the tenth of a second delay on his shot every single time. The way he often plays the puck close to 
his skate and load up on his stick, but wait just that little extra fraction of a second before letting him go, completely fooling the defenders and the goalies on what the natural timing of that shot should have been. You know the way you look at a player shooting and your brain does all the necessary calculations and you just know when the puck is being released. Not with Crystal. If he wants to fool you, he's fooling you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. If you watch Smith, for example, you will most likely see him toe drag a shot around a defender at some point in the game, and this seemed like one of his main delay. It fools the defender, but not necessarily the goalie, because at least from a camera point of view, you can still always know when it's being released. Again, not with Crystal. If he's changing the release timing, it's always a fraction of a second before or after what you thought it would be. He has those little stutters that are just elite in my opinion and all this is just so fluid and remember when we talk about Bradley Nado and how his shot is just so damn accurate and looks like a high-end NHL shot it's the same for Crystal he can shoot the puck with pinpoint accuracy wherever he wants and wherever he wants seems often to be against the grain top shelf if we take Crystal's shot for what it is and we forget about the nights off and the inconsistencies here and there and we expect him to get better at it he has very close to an elite shot and might very well become an elite goal scorer, but a lot will have to change for that to happen. At number 4, here comes Colby Barlow. Nothing is ever guaranteed in the NHL, but Barlow is as close as it gets to be a sure shot 20-25 goal scorer in the NHL. The guy scored 46 goals in 59 games in the OHL as a guy who just turned 18 two months ago and he scored 30 goals in the previous year so it's not like it's a one-time thing, he's just really good at scoring goals. And honestly, I feel like this is the low end of his projection. If it turns out that he was just too mature for the OHL like many are saying or that his, his skating isn't good enough and that his shot isn't that great after all or whatever it is, he can always just turn around and crash the net like he does night after night in the OHL. In my opinion, his shot is high-end and I rated it as high-end in my scouting report, but he scores goal in so many ways that it's hard to see a future where he isn't scoring. Whether it's his absolute bomb of a one-timer, his curl drag wrist shot or his crashing the net tendencies, he's going to score a lot of goals. It's also how every time you watch him, he's got better at something. I don't know if he's working day and night on his shot, but the difference from the beginning of the season and the end is just ridiculous. He used to let his wrist shot go and try to change the angle on it and it would move like an inch from left to right. Now the same shot by the end of the season moved like a foot and a half on his curl drag. Obviously, I'm exaggerating with the foot and a half thing, but the change of angle on his wrister is huge and it's fluid and fast. Then there's also the fact that he can rip an absolute bomb of a one-timer from the flank or the slot or a powerful catch and release from the low slot day after day, night after night. He plays in traffic and he seems to be in his element when he's surrounded and he has the compact yet powerful release to score when he's tightly guarded. Like I said, I cannot see a future where he doesn't score in the NHL because of how and when and where he does it. As you can see, I like Barlow, I, like I like Barlow a lot, he will need someone to get the puck on his stick but once he has it, he's a major, major threat. Finally in the top 3 and at number 3, I have Adam Fantilli. The issue that I have here is that what is it that I can say that hasn't already been said about him? Most people who are interested in this type of video already know everything there is to know about him but for those who don't, he's, he's pretty good, he's not bad. I'm, I'm not bringing much of value here, but I have to have him in my list because by now it's pretty clear that he'll be one of the best scorer coming out of this draft, so here is my opinion. To me, Fantilly is, like some other on this list, the result of the combination of his skills. I understand that it is for every player, but for him it's different. It's like Leonard, but on steroids. Instead of combining sixes and sevens in his game, Everything is brought up a notch, he's combining 7s and 8s and 9s everywhere. I could debate with anyone that his shot is one of the least dominant attribute of his game, but yet he scored 30 goals in 36 games, making him the most dominant first year eligible goal scorer in the NCAA since the 2000-2001 season, and you could argue the most dominant ever. 
It's when you add a shot to his powerful, powerful skating, or when you add it to his otherworldly stick handling and small area puck skills, or when you add it to his competitive mind and how he dunks on everybody with body positioning and the sheer will that he has to get to the point he intends to go. Take all this and add it to an amazing yet simple hockey mind that is set to find the most direct way to get to the most dangerous area and shoot the puck with everything that he has. That's what Fantilli is. He has the soft skills to execute plays like Crystal or like Smith, but those soft skills are attached to a powerful body and a powerful skater with a mind that is dead set on ripping the puck through the goalie from 2 meters away if he has to. And then there's the fact that he can also score from anywhere on the ice with a powerful wrister or snapshot or one-timer and seems to be really really good at threading the puck through sticks and pads. So in the end, I would grade a shot a 7.5, somewhere between above average and high end. For him, like I said at the beginning, it's really the combination of his skill set that makes him the goal scorer that he is. I could see him become a 25-35 type of goal scoring, a bit like Anze Kopitar. That's pretty much a projection that I would have for him if everything hits. So at number 2, I have no other than Matvey Mishkov, the Russian phenom locked in a giant KHL contract. I honestly believe that if it wasn't for the contract or the origin of Mishkov considering the geopolitical situation in the world right now, I can believe that team would be passing on Mishkov after Bedard or at the very maximum after Fantilly. I understand that size is important and the fact that Fantilly is who he is and is also a center definitely makes it enough of an argument to pick him before Mishkov, but Mishkov is in a tier of his own after Bedard offensively. And not just a goal scorer, but overall as a player. He's just as good a creator as he is a scorer. The combination of his elite, elite puck skills and stick handling and his elite shot and his generational mind is as good as you're gonna get as an offensive threat. He has one of the best offensive mind I have ever seen and the way he opens up lanes for himself and others on the ice at the KHL level every single shift is just phenomenal. He's just always at the exact right place and exact right time for a catch and release. He knows exactly how the opposing team reacts to anything that he does so he'll consistently pass to an open teammate to create a small opening and reposition for a quick shot. And when there's no space at all, he can use his elite stick and lane to keep possession of the puck while waiting for the smallest of lanes for a perfect shot on net. And that's one of the things that really separate his shot from the other high end shot. He does have all the attribute of a high end shot like others on this list. He has the pinpoint accuracy, the velocity, the quick and powerful release, a variation of shot and different fakes and delays but what stands out is how much he can find the net from anywhere on the ice for him it just really doesn't matter how many players are in the way for him they aren't obstacle they're assets like i said he can wire the puck with elite accuracy through the smallest of openings and lanes it's really like you can see the corridor which the puck is gonna go through while the goalie isn't seeing anything I'll go in much more details about this offensive game when I do my full draft profile on him, but overall, he's a magician offensively. If I had to grade his shot alone without the other attributes that help him be as effective as he is, I would rate his shot a 9, meaning I project it to be an elite shot at the NHL level. And finally, at number 1, and like I'm sure none of you expected, I have Connor Bedard. What a surprise. With Bedard, I suffer from the same issue that I had with Fantilly. Everything has been said, everything has been written and showed through video, but to put it simply, I have never ever seen a player with that good of a shot at that age. Not Matthews, not the Brinket, not Caulfield, not anyone. I don't know for Patrick Kane and I don't know for Stamco since I wasn't evaluating Tatton at that time, but to me and to almost every scout in the world, He's a generational talent. It's completely crazy to think that he has a type of shot that could make him the best goal scorer in the NHL. Not only he has the shot for it, but he has the puck skills for it, the spatial awareness for it, and the instinct for it. He's the complete opposite of what Mishkov is in the offensive zone. Mishkov is more cerebral, like he's planning everything. Bedard plays off of his instinct. He never looks like he's thinking or planning anything. Everything is, he does is done at 
maximum pace and he's going in hard head first in every offensive push so he definitely doesn't have time for thinking like i said everything is instinctual for him if he can score all the time night after night at such a crazy pace it's not only because of his shot though but also because of his phenomenal one-on-one -on -one skills again just like his shot i don't think i've seen any player at this age be so dominant one-on-one -on -one. not even mcdavid McJesus had crazy speed and acceleration and no one in the OHL could ever dream to keep up with him. Bedard doesn't have that. He has to rely on his elite stick handling and spatial awareness to beat defender one on one. He has that special ability to just keep the puck out of reach for everyone until he drops the puck in front of his foot and explode it off of his stick in a fraction of a second. Again, I will go in more detail about everything when I release my full scouting report about him, but one thing that I know for sure is, however good you think he is, he's better than that. I had conversation with people who don't follow the draft that much, but knew his shot was great and even elite in the WHL, but didn't understand that his shot in some aspect was better than the best shooter in the world right now at this moment. You never see this. Sometimes... We'll see shots that are elite in their respective league and can translate to the NHL as an elite attribute. Take Caulfield for example, every scout and their mother knew that if he figured out the size thing at higher level, then his shot would translate into an NHL elite attribute, but something had to be figured out. With Bedard, there's no figuring things out or risk attached to it. He can just keep doing what he's doing right now and he'll be one of the best scorer in the NHL. For me, it's clear that his shot is a 10, it's generational, it's a total game changer. The only other 10s that I've given before are McDavid and Jack Hughes skating, if I remember correctly, but I don't have the notes from my first two, three years of doing this. So for me to grade a 10, it has to be crystal clear that this particular skill, it will end up in the top 1% in the league or has the possibility to push the boundaries of what we know and what we've seen. It has to be a complete game changer that can break open a game just with that single attribute. That's how good I think his shot is. Alright guys, that is it. I know it was a long video, but if you got to the end of it, I would appreciate if you can let me know down in the comments if you are interested in this type of video. I made this one to test the waters, but they are extremely long and hard to do, so give me the thumbs up in the comments if you want more of this type, or just tell me, nah, stick to your scouting reports, alright? So thank you for watching, see you on the next one, peace. Fakes the shot, now he'll take the shot, scores!